everybody, Backyard Fullian here. Now for those of you who have been following my channel for a while, you will already know that I quit a day job to take up pouring silver and making videos here on YouTube as a job, as a full-time money-earning living. Now whilst it's not the most lucrative money-earning living, it is one of the most satisfying jobs I have ever done and I have never been happier in my career to date. It is quite amazing how fulfilling this hobby has turned my life around into a small sustainable business. And I've been asked countless times through emails, comments, silver forum, how people get, can get started pouring silver. They want to perhaps emulate myself and lots of others out there because there is not just me, there's countless others who are now full-time self-sustaining hobby businesses, whether they still have their day jobs as well, probably quite a few do, but at the same time, people love the flexibility, the creativity, of pouring silver, of creating things. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts, what I've gleaned, what I've learned over this last couple of years doing this and hopefully share some sage advice. I like to think it's sage advice. Of course, it's not financial advice. And I'm certainly not advocating that anybody goes and quits their job to start pouring silver because let me tell you, it is not a easy living to make money by at all. So uh, yeah, there's lots of things I want to talk about today. So I'm just going to start talking, start sharing some of my experiences and thoughts. If you've got any comments or questions as we go throughout the video, then please feel free to share those down in the comments section. Um, otherwise, let's crack on. So I've been doing this as a kind of full time business, I suppose, for the last two and a bit years now. Uh, but at the same time, I've been also pouring silver as a self sustaining hobby whilst doing the day job along the side. Uh, since about 2016, so July 2016, I think I started pouring my first bits of silver. And like many other people out there, I was just simply inspired by other pourers of silver out there in YouTube land. I got inspired by Hi Ho Silver, Mr. Zeke, Losing Louie, uh, just to name a few. There are countless others too. And uh, I wanted to give it a go, so I did. And I had no plans right at the start to uh, make it into any kind of self-sustaining hobby business. In fact, I wanted to just make some cool things to have. I'd started collecting silver coins at that time, and I just wanted to have something that was, you know, cool and different. But I fell in love with it right from the start, the challenge of it, creating these things. And that's one of the, one of the aspects which I want to focus on the most. If you want to have something in your life which is exceptionally fulfilling, really, really absolutely amazing to be able to create something it's just brilliant and for those of you who are you know creative minded already perhaps you're artists or arts and crafts oriented you'll know what I mean to actually have a finished product in your hand created by you that you've made is absolutely incredible the feeling there is fantastic especially so when if you're making it as a gift for somebody if you're sending it away to be gifted and then you get some of the feedback that's one of the most amazing things that I get to experience when I create something for somebody and send it off to them and I get feedback from the person who's received it as a gift. It just, it really does, it, it warms my heart to some degree. Uh, and that is probably the single biggest thing that you can get out of a hobby like this, pouring silver. Now in terms of getting started with pouring silver, so I will put some kind of sage financial advice in here. Now you don't have to be a, uh, you know, you don't have to be a business mogul, you don't have to have an MA in business management or anything like that to get started with a hobby business. It's in fact becoming so much more common in this kind of global economy we're seeing evolve now where people's jobs aren't necessarily enough to fulfill them both financially but also, you know, spiritually. And I, I see that so much more with the youth of today. And that's a very telling thing. In fact, there has been a number of different news articles which I've seen of late of new young entrepreneurs who have come up with an idea, brought it to market, and it now helps their paycheck. You know, they get an extra bump on their paycheck at the end of each month because of a small little idea that they've had. And for some lucky few, it turns into a full-time sustainable business, which is uh, exceptionally cool. So it is something that is becoming more and more common out there. But I will put an air of caution out there for people, certainly when you're looking at pouring silver. If, of course, you're doing like other arts and crafts, knitting or something, the, the raw materials are not going to be as expensive as, of course, silver. And the overheads for getting the equipment that you need as well, you know, that's going to be a fairly pricey thing. Although it's not as expensive as you might think. Furnaces, a couple of hundred dollars for some of the basic models, perhaps a little bit more for some of the, the larger furnaces and the ongoing cost of the graphite crucibles. 
and it does it does spiral though so you need to be careful if you have this great idea that you're going to be able to get all of the kit and start pouring silver and making these cool items right from the get-go I think you need to just have a little bit of a reality check because it's expensive you will if you're certainly aiming to make things to sell to have a self-sustaining business the upfront costs will take a long time to recoup and recover so my advice and this is how it started for me is to get started as it you know being a self fulfilling hobby something that you could have for yourself and I didn't even aim really to sell any of the pieces that I first have it was only when I started sharing some videos here on YouTube uh, that people started getting in touch saying can I buy that and of course the community spirit here is incredibly high and for supporting new pourers for supporting people who are trying their best to create cool things you know it's incredible and it's invaluable and it is very very alluring for people to try and perhaps take advantage of now I'm not accusing anybody of taking advantage of but at the same time that's there's this little bubble that exists here in the YouTube silver and poured silver community where people will want to buy anything and everything from anybody who pours silver uh, for just one piece to have one piece from every piece in a collection so to speak and that's one thing that I would say is a really it's almost it's not dangerous but it's something that you can get over uh, over exaggerated with in your own mind so um, the first kind of sales video I did of mine back in 2000, late 2016 I produced something like 30 pieces I videoed them I showed them on YouTube all 30 of them sold out within like 24 hours 36 hours I think and I was absolutely blown away I was like what what, what is going on what, what you know am I doing something really really well here but actually it's just that initial rush that initial market of people who are new to you who want to get some of those items Following on from that, it does become harder to sell. And the key thing here is then to create unique products. So that's my next kind of top tip, I suppose. I don't really know if this is meant to be a top tips video. But the things that you produce, they are important. It is the quality that makes the difference. It's the uniqueness that makes the difference, whether you're going to be doing open cast silver pouring, sand cast 3D silver pouring. You know, make something unique. Make something that's different for you. It is the single best thing that I think that we've done, uh, you know, to have that unique brand, to have that, you know, that we pour things, we show them on video, we have those unique ripples, we have, you know, the hallmarking, that is also another thing to factor in. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment for you UK watchers out there. But something that makes us and marks us as different to other people, uh, I think is really, really important. From the hallmarking point of view so that's another thing uh, that here in the UK if you are looking to do this as a self-sustaining business it's a really tough one to break break into in terms of the market because these little markings that you see here underneath the 2020 are the assay marks so to sell something here in the United Kingdom out of silver you need to have an assay mark and hallmark applied to your pieces to verify that it's 909 silver it's the law that's the way it is and that's not cheap to get set up it's not cheap to submit it's not cheap to then uh, look to sell them on at any sort of decent profit margin which is of course the the ultimate goal if you want it to be self-sustaining so that's kind of the logistics of the actual side of things you know it's, it's some top level top tips here but in general if you are going to do things be careful budget make sure that you've got a sensible plan going forwards when I got started with this my financial backer so to speak was Mrs Backyard Bullion and if you could see the look on her face when I turned to her and said, I want to pour silver, I want to get a furnace and I want to pour silver. She looked at me with a very, very strange ex expression and uh, she then said to me, that's fine, you can do that. But if you're going to do it as any kind of self-sustaining hobby business, you need to do a little business plan for me. Now, she knows me. She knows that I've got a kind of business consultancy background. I've done, uh, you know, I've got a master's in business management and uh, it was one of those things that she said I think to almost put me off doing it uh, but I took it quite seriously I put a little business plan in place I put a little budget in place for all of the materials and that first sort of sales side of things you know what what we would have come back in and then roll over that profit into the next cycle and she let me go and do it I say she let me go and do it she she was always going to let me do it but you know it was one of those things where um, sensible careful planning really did save the day and that's a really really important thing to think about for all of you the last point that I want to touch on is uh, is around the social media side of things. So in this global world that we live in of social media, uh, that is the key. You cannot expect to do anything these days 
online, certainly with a hobby business, without engaging in social media. And for a lot of people, getting a YouTube channel going is, uh, you know, it, it seems so daunting, but it's really not. And again, it's very cathartic, it's very creative, and the amount of skills that you learn over time is invaluable. And I just look back at this last, gosh now, what have I done, three and a half years of creating content here on YouTube, and I look back at some of the first early videos I did, and it's so wooden, my, my kind of, you know, my tone is wooden, my uh, my delivery is wooden, and I did not, I don't like looking back at my first couple of videos, it's really cringeworthy, that is for sure. Um, but um, yeah, I, I've i learned a lot in terms of style and delivery and confidence, this, this whole process has given me a lot of confidence in terms of speaking. A lot of people also will, um, will comment on some of the videos where you've rambled on for 10, 15 minutes at a time, and perhaps you lose, tan you go on tangents or you talk about different you know, things that are in your mind at that particular time. And a lot of people don't understand that the skill required to talk in one take at the camera for 10, 15, 20 minutes and still have a co coherent video in place is actually really difficult. And it's a skill which I've evolved over time. And the amount of takes that go into some of these videos is quite, Staggering, and in fact, Mrs. Black Cowboy often comments when I am videoing, and she's been, you know, demoted to go upstairs out of the way. Uh, she can sort of hear the amount of fluffs that I do and the amount of retakes that I will do, and it is quite funny for her. But you know, that's a skill which I've learned. Video editing is a skill which I've learned as well, and I like to think this is where I'm going to finish with this this last point here today. A lot of what I've said today might, in fact, put you off uh, doing a lot of this. There's a lot of negatives, a lot of barriers, perhaps, to getting involved with pouring silver or even creating content here on YouTube. You know, a lot of people here on YouTube or here think about YouTube as a kind of, you know, you're monetized or you're not. There's no point in doing it if you're not monetized, but I completely disagree. If uh, monetization were, go were to go away tomorrow, it would be exceptionally sad. It'd be a little bit of pocket money less in my bank account every month. But ultimately, it's not the reason that we make videos here. I like, to, I like to make the videos. I will continue to make videos even if monetization goes away because I have learned so many different skills from this entire journey. I've learned, as I said, the video editing skills, confidence skills, public speaking skills, social media management, marketing, bringing, bringing products to market uh, in a sort of, what I like to say is an ethical way. You know, I, I pour silver for a living. But I have not, I kind of suppose I am right now, but I have, it's, it's minute 12, people aren't going to be watching this, like the view, viewer retention rate goes down and down and down, so there's probably only like 20% of you watching to the bitter end now, but I don't tout my stuff all the time. You know, if I've got a specific product which I'm doing a product release for, of course I'll sort of talk about that at the earlier parts of the video, but you know, these hammered rounds, I'm not here to tout them, I'm not here to say that you have to go onto my website and sell them. That's a really important thing to think about as well. How you are perceived from other areas. And that's that's something that I've learnt over this last couple of years here doing videos. From the other side of things, you know, running a small business, you learn so much. The bookkeeping, the, uh, the stock management, the website design. You know, I've learnt so many skills. And I have always said to a lot of my friends and family who know about what I do, for a living now uh, and they they often will you know when i told them about it they'll have similar reactions to mrs backyard bullion the expression on their faces uh you, you what and um you know if it all goes pear-shaped if it all goes belly up so to speak i have learned so many skills i have learned countless countless skills that i feel that if i was to go back into real work into i say real work into that kind of day job world that one spins really well I would have an awful lot to talk about at interview. I would be able to talk about my business, how I've grown it, how I've grown the channel, how I've developed as an individual, the skills which I've learned, and that is the key thing that I want to leave you all with here. If you're gonna do something, do it because you want to do it. Do it not for profit, do it not for your own, uh, well, I was gonna say not for your own you know, selfish reasons, but ultimately do it because you will enjoy it. And if you do something you enjoy, it doesn't become a chore, it doesn't become a job, it doesn't become, you know, something that you are required to do. It is just fun. And that is the most important thing. Always keep perspective and keep things fun. So anyway, that is my kind of ramble about being a producer and small business owner and silver maker and YouTube content creator. I'd love to know your thoughts on this subject. So please do feel free to comment down below. Uh, otherwise, that's it for me today. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a fantastic week ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.